Australian TV show that I was on as a guest. So yeah, uh, let's get started. It's gonna be weird uh, watching myself uh, looking Our for things. Our next perfect holiday adventure took us to Boulder, Colorado, for something that had been over 30 years in the making. What's that? <laughs> Can I come in? You got a weapon? No, I haven't got a weapon. Come in. Thank you. <laughs> well, I uh, passed Hamish's security check. Well, it's Boulder, Colorado, so I don't know why he's asking if he has a weapon or not. You'd think he'd be asking if he has any, you know. <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, former Boulderite, so it's like. <laughs> I'm and alive. gave him some mail. <laughs> My money from Nana. Oh well. Question: Would you like to make five million dollars today? Answer. Yes. It's Fairly long it. explanation for this, so... How long does it take to say, we're doing 24 hours of scratches? It's not that, Haim, it's this. There's a guy called Forrest Fenn, who in 1988 sold heaps of his belongings to buy treasure. And we're gonna rob him. No, we're not gonna rob him. Back to my animation. <laughs> Fenn buried the treasure somewhere in the Rocky Mountains, leaving a series right. of... So I want to explain something real quick. Okay, so they, they say buried, right? But, okay, so the treasure had been found uh, about a year after this episode came out. And it uh, it wasn't buried. I never I never even said that it was buried either. I always thought that it was uh, above ground because Fenn even said that he wanted the treasure to be found and you don't need any special equipment to find it. So I would think that a method detector would be considered special equipment. And like I said, you know, when it was when it was discovered, it was mentioned it was above ground. It was just kind of sitting there as a had like a bunch of like leaves and twigs and whatever and stuff like that kind of like on top of it over being out in the wilderness for like 10 years you know and uh, yeah yeah because you could totally hide something in plain sight and people would never find it if you've ever been geocaching then you know what i'm talking about clues as to how to find it in a poem so it's a cryptic poem it's a cryptic poem i love cryptic poems cool i'll uh, stop interrupting the animation the rocky mountains take up over 300,000 square kilometers of the united states okay so it's kind of funny because like like say say 300,000 300,000 kilometers. Oh, yeah. Huh. So wait a second, because they're only showing uh, Rocky Mountain National Park in, in on this map here. Uh, so like, it's Glacier Basin, ask me what. So like, uh, yeah, there's Long's Peak. Uh, Estes Park would be right about here, I believe, but yeah. So, wait, 300,000 square kilometers. That's, uh, I think that's, yeah, that's about the size of Rocky Mountain National Park, I believe. In the Rocky Mountains, uh, actually run from Alaska all the way down to uh, New Mexico. So that's a really big area. So they go through Canada as well. So the treasure is tough to find, and despite hundreds of thousands of people looking for it since 2010, it's still out there. And we're going to find it. Well, that's what we're hoping for. Are we really? I reached out to a guy called Matt. Matt is positive of where the treasure is, but so am I. He, uh, <laughs> Just, what does Matt say though first? No, no, you have I'll to see go if, no, I'll see if it lines up. <laughs> Don't laugh, Ando. You know my vibe is very powerful if deployed correctly. Matt thinks it's in Colorado. That's why we're here. That's not we're a wind lining up. No, we're lining up. <laughs> no, it's not a wind My wind vibe wind. and Matt's is lining up. Gee, my vibe skills were going to be crucial to finding this treasure. Uh, so kind of how this worked is they were wanting to film in Colorado, and then they had found out about the treasure, so they were trying to get in touch with people who like lived in the area to go out and search for it. And and one of the places I actually kind of like thought that it would be in would be in uh, in Colorado. Uh, I had like a couple other locations that I was thinking about where it could have been. Uh, one of those was in Wyoming where it was discovered, but. Uh, anyways, whatever. Well, my vibe was that we needed to see Matt, so we set off to do that. Is this Matt with the blue hat? Yep. God, he's ready to hunt. <laughs> he's bought a big water bottle. <laughs> and it was good to put a face to all my email correspondence. Yeah, he... Explain to Hamish how... Okay, so I, I, I overpacked for this. Uh, I wasn't really expecting it to be kind of like as... Uh, uh, lenient and, like, casual kind of a search as it would. Uh, the backpack mostly just has, like, you know... Uh, food stuffs in it like MRE packs and things like that and there's like a couple of like uh, maps that I had stuffed in there and that's pretty much it like you know you know basic supplies you take with a like a quick overnight camping kind of thing so like I said overpacked and and about the the hats uh in the goggles you're probably wondering about that so I don't usually wear hats but this time I did and the only hat I had was the dipper pines hat so it's got the pine tree on it from 
different pines and gravity falls into uh, i wasn't sure if there was like any like you know copyright thing with that so what i did is i took the airman goggles and stuck that over the front of the hat to kind of, kind of like cover that up so that's why i look like a yeah <laughs> kind of like a geek right How long you've been looking for this treasure uh probably close to five years now five years yeah. how many people are out there looking uh, last I heard was like around 35,000. 35,000 people looking those. for the treasure. Yeah. Uh, Andy told me by the way, too, these guys are really, really tall. So I'm five foot four, and these guys were, I asked them how, how tall they were, and they were both uh, slightly over six and a half foot. I think, I think like one of them was like six and a half foot, the other one was like six foot eight, something like that. So yeah, pretty tall. Like, you've got a spot you've never been to? That's right. Yep. And you're confident? Yeah, pretty sure. So pretty you... sure? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like a lot of the, um, Clues kind of like fit that area. The clues Matt's referring to are the ones left by Finn in that poem I was talking about earlier. I've got good news. Remember I emailed you and said, if you had a chance to ask Finn any questions, what those questions might be? Yeah. We've got a video of Finn answering your questions here. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That's awesome. Yep, through some exhaustive wrangling, the reclusive oh Finn, who owns a lot of boots, had agreed to answer our questions on tape. Hi, Andy, I'm Forrest Finn. I'm here to answer your questions whenever you're ready. I knew this was a strong bargaining chip, so I had to clear something up with Matt. If we find it, what kind of percentage do we get and you get, do you think? Well, I always go by what's the most fair, and that's splitting it equally between everybody who's in the party. So, you know, there's how many of us here? Like, <laughs> probably around... Oh, don't uh, worry about the camera. Oh, no. oh, oh yeah. Don't, they don't get a share. We're like, like eight. <laughs> like eight crew, you're going to get less than 10%. No, no, no. Dale's putting his hand up for some. Five million. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dale, we are cutting you out. And we presented a 50-50 split between us and Matt. you got to get 50%. But then you guys got to split a 50. We're happy. <laughs> happy to split a 2.5. Who's which side are you on? <laughs> Gee, Matty really needs to work on his negotiation skills. I don't think he understands who he's up against with Andy. Oh, God, I'm excited. We had a team of three, and that was soon to become four as I introduced the guys to Tracy Brown. Tracy, how are you going? A body language expert who I thought could give us crucial information from watching Finn's answers on the video. Yeah, wait a minute. Y'all going to cut me in on this treasure, though, once we get this dialed in? <laughs> She's good. She's got a bit of Andy Lena. We had discussed Matt giving up a fair bit of his percentage for you, Trace. Is that dog. okay? You're a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Business dog. Uh, Tracy, we can give you 5% out of our end. How about 7? Make it 7. 7% 7 of our end? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What the heck? The guy that only bought Vibe had just given away my stake. <laughs> anyway, time to watch the video. I think we have a pretty nice shot here. Now you're going to have to speak loud because I'm not wearing my ears. Now, Trace, at the moment, he's just discussed um, framing and mm -hmm. audio. Any clues yep. thus far? Well, I'm, I'm looking for his normal way to behave, oh, so good. we're getting that Are off you of this. Line? Yeah, I'm getting his baseline. Okay, great. Here we go. Has the location you have chosen for the treasure always had a special meaning to you? Well, Andy, I, always is a long time. I, I'll, I'll just say that where I hid the treasure is a very special place to me. Uh, and, and I really don't want to elaborate on that. And that hasn't been his whole life. It's recent. You reckon? Yeah. Tracy is my new favorite okay. human. Have you ever been to El Dorado Canyon? Uh, now, Andy, you know I'm not going to answer a question like that. He has. He's been there. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> but, but, that doesn't mean that he hid the treasure there. I mean, right? <laughs> So Finn had been to a place called El Dorado Canyon, and Matt had that spot in mind because of the poem. We have to see part of the beginning of it because the first part is begin at where warm waters halt. From what I heard someone tell me this about uh, El Dorado Springs, is originally it used to be a hot spring. Mm -hmm. And when they built the pool, they, they, they did something like when in construction, and they ended up causing the waters no longer to be um, uh, thermal pools anymore. Oh, it just warm waters have stopped. I'm getting gold tingles. Oh, wow. I'm getting gold tingles. <laughs> I was vibing so hard you could have sold me at sexy land. Let's make five mil. So it was off to El Dorado Canyon. And at the base of the mountain, I introduced everyone to the crucial fifth and final member of the team. Harold! Hello! His skills were gonna guarantee us the win. Maybe yeah. you explain what you do, Harold. Um 
Yeah, yeah Harold was was a pretty cool dude. So he's like, um, uh, he does dowsing and stuff. So if you don't know what dowsing is, that's when you like look for, say, gold, water, oil, things of that sort uh, with uh, using dowsing rods, dowsing sticks, or sometimes even pendulums. Um, Harold uses the uh, the dowsing rods when I've done uh, any kind of divination before. I've uh, used pendulums. Uh, pendulums just work better for me, and I've tried using dowsing sticks or dowsing rods. They don't seem to respond as well for me. So it just depends on like the person and like what like reacts best with them as well. I douse. He douses. So these are rods. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're gonna do two different things. First, uh, you know, is there a treasure here? And so my answer is yes. Wow. Okay. Perfect. That's what we thought. <laughs> yes, mate. Can you just double check it's not like a treasure, like it's not like a national beauty treasure? <laughs> no. Great. Like, are these things gonna be at a point to where the treasure might be? Well, what I was gonna do is use this map. Yeah. And you already have a pretty good idea, I assume. Maddie, this is you. Where? This system is unbeatable. You just put your hand on our search zone. Over here, it's a little bit more um, secluded. Secluded, yeah. Okay, Harold, that's your information. I'm okay. deploying you. Go now, for it. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear anything you said. <laughs> good strategy. Because what I'm going to yeah, because like how how this would would typically work is if you're trying to find a particular location. You wouldn't want to like want to uh, identify that location on a map. So when you do map dowsing, like like the the best way to do it would be to lay uh, the map out flat on a table, and then you would uh, do like what he's about to do, and you would run your finger vertical and then horizontal, and then depending on like how the dowsing rod or pendulum uh, reacts to the, the movement, you would then get your triangulate for those two coordinates and be able to search in that area. So that's, that's how that works. What you do is go like this and wait for this to turn when I see it, okay? Okay. So I will start here, and I'm doing an X and a Y, right? So completely forgetting what Matt said, Harold made his way along the map. Oh! Oh, well, look at that. Okay, so, so kind of mentally make a note of that. And right. double-checked it from a different direction. Make it happen. Just cut. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. We had it. Harold matched the same place. I love science so much. <laughs> All the clues so far have lined up. Matched the same place after I about to get <laughs> pointed it out, right? Brown trout. We just saw the trout fisherman. See? <laughs> I still get that way. Okay, okay, just real quick with the with the brown trout fisherman. Uh, so uh, he just happened to be wearing like a hat that had a bee on it. And, and one of the guys, I forget which one, got super excited about it. And he's like, look, that's the home of brown. He's got a... <laughs> <laughs> so that was great. It was just amazing how perfectly timed that was. It was. <laughs> There's almost nowhere else it could be. There's nowhere else it could be. We were in Idaho Springs, Colorado. Oh, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Following clues from a poem in order to find five million dollars worth of treasure. Matt, Tracy, and Harold were all helping us. Speaking of that, would everybody like a drop of oil? What's I don't know. Oil? Well, what we need that for? It's oh, 45 gosh. different oils plus gold. Oh, oh I'm feeling it too. Oh, can you sure. smell some jojoba? No, no jojoba. Rose hip? Uh, nope. Gee, your vibe was off here. Lavender? Yes. I'm back. Well, that's a relief. Yeah, that, that oil was really, really strong, you know. I mean, it, it basically just it permeated through the entire car, and at, at some point I finally got to the point where it was uh, irritating my sinuses, and um, I actually had to uh, wash my hands at the uh, little, uh, 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 I guess, uh, visitor center that they have, you know, in the park and stuff, because I was like, yeah, this stuff's too strong, dude. <laughs> just in time as we arrived at our chosen spot and we readdressed the clues in the poem. Put in below the home of the brown. Excuse me, sir. Were you fishing for brown trout? Yes. <laughs> brown trout. We just saw the trout fisherman. If you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down, your quest to cease. And as we all chatted, uh, Harold just did his thing. We really are looking for the right. blaze. Oh, Harold, what? you got to get that way. We got to get that way. Awesome, Harold. Everything was adding up perfectly. So we set off to the area Matt had chosen and Harold had confirmed before we split up for a more thorough search. Because Andy's off with Matt. <laughs> They've been gone for six or seven minutes. I'm honestly a little concerned for Matt's financial Matt's future. Matt's going to come back with 15% left. Matt's going to come back two million in debt. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Matt, 
Yeah. Did Andy discuss any percentages with you? No, we were just looking at the map. Yeah, but we actually oh, were. Too. It's how hurtful. It's like... The snake can't get hurt, for it has no feelings. <laughs> <laughs> just be careful, Winnie. I don't want you to be alone with Andy anymore, all right? Okay. With Matt's finances back secure, we sat down to collect our thoughts. Can I throw something out there? There's a ruin up here, Craig's Hotel. Yep. You were telling me about that, Tracy. Yep. You can still see the the kitchen area, the What happened to the hotel? Place? It burned. It burned. See? A blaze. blaze. Mm. There's still dishes up there. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably make sense because he said that he did say he What, what was that? What was that? Yeah. You see, it kind of kind of sucks though is um Whoever they did for the got for the editing for the video, they they cut me off there. And if they didn't want me to actually be saying anything for that part, uh, they could have taken that out. You know, very easily. I've done tons of video editing myself, and that's that's actually not a very difficult edit to do. But I don't know. It's it's kind of weird that they did that. You know, I, I never understood that. But yeah, because I mean, like, I had information. Maybe it's for time. I I don't know. Sure, no. Uh, that was a yes. So it'd, it'd be around. Is it? Yeah, I get a yes. Well done, Harold. Maybe, maybe it was because I was snacking on those uh, uh, little pack of nuts that I had, you know? So, you know, just needed some extra extra energy there. So when we sat down, I ripped open one of my my Emery packs, and it was like a little thing of trail mix, you know, that I had with one of them. There was one last problem. Yeah, it's a hike. It's uphill. Harold, at your age, do you have a strong enough heart to get there? I think so, yes. No, just ask the rods. Great, great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling good about this. So up the mountain we went. Look how beautiful this is. You said you wanted Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Huh? It does look like that, that too. Lord of the Rings. Totally like it, right? We were like hobbits, Matt, but instead of tossing a ring into lava, we get $5 million at the end, which I think's a better deal. Wow. And an hour and a half later, okay, we've made it. There she is. All right, the old blaze. <laughs> the old blaze. <laughs> now, gee, I hope this is worth. It. <laughs> how, are you, how are you holding up? Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> All right. Just we reminded ourselves of the poem. If you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down. Your quest to cease. Harold, I'm going to start sweeping. As soon as you work out exactly the angle, down back down to the creek. I get in the creek, and I'll know it when I see it. Okay, so I'll start. Okay, okay start. Come on, on, magic sticks. Yes! yes! There. So we had our exact location. We were there, yeah? We yeah. confirmed it with Harold. Right. We're, cooking. Right. we're cooking. We're cooking. And headed back down the mountain. So that's where we were. Sadly bidding farewell to Harold, because I'd booked him on a flight back to Phoenix at 7 pm and he was going to miss it. Goodbye, Good. old friend. You're like Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Tell me far, so far you but can take us. Gandalf, who has got a job interview tomorrow, so he's like shaved and cleaned up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it had been four and a half hours of scientific searching to get to this position. We'd use code-breaking, vibe, sticks, all the tools. We consulted the poem one last time. See? So hear me all and listen good. Your effort will be worth the cold. If you're brave and in the wood... Right there, yeah? Yeah. I give you title to the gold. Everything had lined up, so I waded into the water, knowing... F so one thing that I think is kind of... Uh weird with this part is uh fen said it was in no place that was dangerous and uh raging river water mountain water uh is potentially dangerous uh even if it doesn't lo really look like it when i was a kid uh someone actually around around my age at the time had gotten uh swept downstream in boulder creek and uh someone saw it happen and the, the guy ran in the, the save the person and pull them out because you know in the summertime when we get all the the snow melt up in the mountains these rivers can get really bad even if it's just a creek they can get bad and in the few years back we even had the uh, really bad flood in Colorado and uh, some rivers that normally don't spill over got pretty deep I, I mean I even remember seeing uh, Cherry Creek actually reach up to about where the how there's a you know several bridges that you know cross over Cherry Creek in the different neighborhoods and stuff, and the water had gotten up to the point where you couldn't actually see underneath the bridge anymore. It was like right up against it. So yeah, really bad idea to be searching in water. And Fen even eventually even said too that it is not underwater. So yeah, there you go.
full well that underneath this log, a treasure trove worth five million dollars would be waiting. There's a ton of spall down there. The temperature was low, but my vibe was high. And as I reached point, under the log, out, Fen's yeah, words kind of ringing water. in my ears. I think somebody's gonna find the treasure. I felt something. But crazily, it was very untreasure like. Hey man! <laughs> this doesn't make sense! I mean, there's almost nowhere else it could be. There's nowhere else it could be. So with heavy hearts, we regrouped on the shoreline to work out what went wrong and to play one of mine and Andy's favourite games, the blame game. Harold did leave at a pretty interesting time. Did you notice that? <laughs> oh, hey, I'd like to hear more about this theory. Yeah, yeah. he just took off right when it was going to turn one way or the other. Yeah. Do you reckon Harold has seen it and is... He's coming really... back for it. He's coming back for it. it. Yeah. Wait, who's seen it? Harold, maybe. Yeah, Harold. Oh, who's been? Oh, you mean the, the, the soothsayer guy with the sticks, right? He's been with us all night. King Harold did make me question why I trusted him with this whole adventure from the beginning. Thank but you. it didn't matter. Thank We'd you had a wonderful day. High five. high five. Wish it was a high five million. Yeah. <laughs> well, Ando, I guess there was nothing left to do but hit our hotel and drink the oh, celebratory baby. champagne I bought a little bit prematurely. Yeah. <laughs> Very warm. Very warm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, did that come out Andy's nose? Yeah, it yeah there it is, both barrels. It really comes at you. I feel, I you didn't think it would do that, did you? Celebration in your mouth, I suppose. Another perfect day on our perfect holiday. All right, so there you have it. Uh, me as a guest on an Australian TV show. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun doing that with, with Hamish and Andy. So it was an experience. And, you know, I made some, <laughs> some fun memories and stuff of that. But anyways, well, uh, this has been Dirk I uh, hope you enjoyed watching. And I guess, uh, yeah, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. And uh, I'll have some videos out uh, at some point. Uh, I was going to be putting out the, the Filmar video that I keep talking about. And uh, I think I might have accidentally deleted it because like, I can't find it. <laughs> so I'm going to have to <laughs> re-record that one as well. Anyways, uh, have a good one. Stay safe out there, and uh, I'll see you later.